Hello and welcome to ISV Spill the Tea, presented by the Retail Solutions Providers Association's niche and startup ISV community. I'm Jim Roddy from the RSPA. We are so glad that you have joined us here today. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with the RSPA, we're North America's largest community of VARs, software developers, right, aka ISVs, independent software vendors, uh, vendors and distributors in the retail, restaurant, grocery, and cannabis verticals. We're a fit for any organization that's serious about growth in those markets. Now, many of our companies have been members for decades. We're actually celebrating our 75th anniversary this year, but we also frequently add startup, startup tech companies, some you'll hear from today, because we accelerate their growth and they see the massive ROI that RSPA membership offers. So if you're serious about growth in the retail IT channel, you see the uh, email address on the bottom of your screen there, just email membership at gorspa.org and we're happy to help you grow your business as well. All right, so before some of our software developer members spill the tea about what they're up to, the RSPA has a few highlights and updates to share with you. And first, I'd like to welcome RSPA VP of Member Services, Ashley Nagy, to talk about our two upcoming events. Hey, Ashley, how are you? Hey, Jim, I'm good. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome. Excited to be here today. Um, so want to be sure that everybody saves the date for those of you that attended retail now 2023 we had a fantastic event thanks to all of you um, mark the calendars for retail now 2024 we'll be in las vegas at the paris hotel july 28th through the 30th and we are already 50 percent sold out on the show floor um, and it's only been a couple of months into the selling season for that so if you have any questions about retail now or you need to reserve your booth be sure to reach out to us you can uh, email me or the membership box at membership at gorspa.org. Um, and then next up is our uh, winter conference. It's Inspire 2024 for our networking nirvana. We're going to be in Puerto Rico uh, at the Wyndham Grand Rio Mar um, Hotel. We'll be there January 28th through the 31st. This is a fantastic opportunity. Uh, it, the, the event usually hosts around 200 to 250 attendees. Um, everybody in attendance, uh, whether it's a vendor, a reseller, or an ISV, uh, generally the leadership level to be able to have half-day workshop sessions, tons of education included in those sessions, and then the second half of the day is strictly for networking to be able to have those real sit-down conversations. Um, so registration is open for Inspire. The hotel block is almost 50% sold out, and some of the excursions are already selling out. So if you have questions on Inspire, uh, be sure to reach out to us and let us know, happy to help. And we do have some first time attendee pricing for that event. Hope to see everybody there soon. Jim, back to you. Great, thank you, Ashley. And let's welcome RSP VP of Educational Services, uh, Kathy Meter, to share some details, uh, latest in the RSPA Academy and our Accelerate program. Kathy, feel free to share anything you like about RSPA education. Thanks, Jim. Good afternoon, everyone. Just wanted to remind all of our members that we have um, education opportunities year round. We have great education opportunities, as Ashley mentioned, at all of our events, um, but we also offer a wide range of education year round. Um, our learning management system, Accelerate, is available to all members, and that hosts uh, hundreds of online courses in areas such as sales skills, um, customer service skills, business operations, and leadership development. So if you haven't had an opportunity, um, make sure you check that out. It's um, Accelerate. And then our education advisory services, um, we work with members and talk with members and help them identify specific courses within Accelerate where they might want to focus their teams or their different departments in their organizations. Um, that's more of a one-on-one -on -one, um, conversation with a custom-built uh, curriculum and learning path for your organization. And you can learn more about those services by reaching out to membership um, at RSPA. Back to you, Jim. Great. Thank you, Kathy. And Ashley, let's turn it back over to you and uh, give some kudos to our annual sponsors and our ISV community sponsors. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Jim. Um, without the support of our annual sponsors, sessions like today's session would not be possible. 
Um, a big thank you to our platinum sponsor, Blue Star, our gold sponsors, CoCard, Heartland, ScanSource, and Star, and our silver sponsors, Elo, Epson, Ingenico, MicroTouch, and Truist. Thank you to our bronze sponsors as well, AutoStar, CRS, DataCap, DataLogic, Evo, Fortis, Ingram Micro, Kitchen Armor, PayIQ, Shift4, TD CentX, Toshiba, and WorldPay from FIS. Again, a big thank you to our sponsors. And then for our niche and startup ISV community sponsors, uh, specifically for this group, APG, Blue Star, Epson, Ingenico, MagTech, MS Cash Store, PayIQ, ScanSource, Star Micronics, and Toshiba. Again, a big thank you to everyone for your continued support of the community. Great. Thank you, Ashley. And uh, we are selling sponsorships for 2024. And again, that magic email address uh, to learn more about sponsorship opportunities is membership at GoRSPA.org. All right, so uh, here's how ISV Spill the Tea will work. So executives from software developer companies representing a variety of verticals will offer their, uh, uh, showcase their offerings in 90 second segments. So this is giving you, the audience, a chance to meet potential new partners who can accelerate your growth in a very quick format. So after these ISVs introduce themselves, everyone will be able to participate in an open forum roundtable discussion. Great chance for you to ask any clarifying questions and again, discover new ISVs in just a matter of minutes. And also uh, RSPA uh, General Counsel Jill Miller, she offers legal services to our members. She also asked me to say this, uh, this will be an open forum information sharing discussion. Please note the views and opinions expressed during this roundtable are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the Retail Solutions Providers Association. And then a personal note, I know I brought this up on a prior roundtable, uh, ISV Spill the Tea is not affiliated with Mr. T. I found out Mr. T is like kind of litigious. Uh, you remember Mr. T from, from the A-team. He actually has uh, trademarked his phrase, I pity the fool. And he says, if anybody ever uses that in a commercial elsewhere, here's his quote, and you can say it to yourself in your Mr. T voice. He says, my people going to be on them. Oh yeah, that's part of Mr. T's retirement fund. So again, we're not affiliated with Mr. T. We are not contributing to his uh, retirement fund. So, all right, well, it is time uh, for us to start spilling the tea. Um, and to start us off, uh, please welcome our first ISV, uh, welcome Evren from Yazara. Uh, Evren, if you can unmute yourself and turn on your camera and uh, kick us off today, please. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, RSPA, for inviting us uh, to this session. Uh, appreciate all the support. Um, um, Yazara Payment Solutions is a leading softball tap on phone uh, solution provider globally. Uh, our CEO is Albert Comas, who's an ex-MasterCard uh, executive. I am uh, Evran Kozju, VP of Sales and Partnership for US and Canada, North America. Uh, we are fully focused on a softball solution to turn a smartphone, uh, any NFC device into a post terminal with our software. Uh, basically, you can uh, a customer can tap their credit card, contactless credit card, or their wallet or back of a phone, either iOS-based or Android-based, and uh, they can take contactless payments. Uh, and uh, the transaction is sent to our backend attestation server, and which is connected to the acquiring host. So that's the uh, overall architecture. And we're working with uh, banks, acquirers, payment processors, uh, ISVs, PSPs, ISOs uh, in the United States were growing uh, in more than 20 uh, countries and more than four continents. Um, and our merchants are telecom stores, logistic companies, food and beverage is one of the biggest uh, segment, grocery stores, bars, cafes, clubs, lodging, hotels, drivers, uh, and other small and medium and uh, businesses. Um, and uh, I'm happy to uh, discuss with any of the members to work on SoftPost project. But also, please uh, reach out to me with any questions or information. Thank you. Great, thank you, Evan. Appreciate that. Thank you for leading us off. Uh, next up, we have uh, Daniel from Accurate. Uh, Daniel, welcome. And can you share with us first where are you dialing in from today? Uh, your old stomping grounds of Erie, Pennsylvania. 
Exactly. That's why I asked. So great to <laughs> have somebody from Erie, another person from Erie representing here on ISV's Spill the Tea. Uh, Daniel, your turn. Uh, share with us uh, and our audience a little bit about Accurate. Yeah, so Accurate is a retail analytics company, and our motto is sell like you should be. So we try to help you utilize your point of sale data to its max and try to find sales anomalies that are uh, preventing you from uh, from selling. So we have a task management uh, app that uh, the alerts are sent to on a daily basis, and it helps you find things like phantom inventory, messy displays on products, products in the back room that needs to be brought to the shelf. Uh, or just slow selling products that need to be rationalized or uh, merchandised. So our primary verticals right now are our grocery and then uh, general retail as well. But uh, grocery seems to be where we're having the best success. And we have also had some cases in, in hardware and uh, building supply uh, uh, stores as well. So our focus is predominantly on uh, brick and mortar. Uh, but there are also applications for this in um, in e-commerce as well. So, um, yeah. So just how we work is the uh, we we get the point of sale data on a nightly basis, and then we have a cloud service that processes it, and then sends the alerts out to our uh, task management app that the store associates or whomever is responsible for it can can utilize that information. Um, so looks like I went through that uh, a lot faster than no. uh, you're, you're, right okay. you're right on time. Okay, you're right on time, four Perfect. seconds ago. So, all right, Daniel, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, appreciate you Perfect. joining us today and uh, get ready to shovel some snow. All right, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right, up next to spill the tea, let's welcome Pat Ward from Dish Out. Hey, Pat, how are you doing? Good, Jim, thank you. A um, little bit about Dish Out. We've been around for about 15 plus years, three primary lines of business. Uh, the first is white label card present enablement for ISOs, VARs, and ISVs via our TRX Pay and Slingshot solutions. Second thing we do is closed loop solutions for university, government, and corporate campuses where we turn an ID into a debit card. Third thing we do is proprietary gift and loyalty. For us, key verticals include hospitality, retail, and recreation. And that takes us into our niche markets, which is universities. Currently, we support about 250 universities in the United States, um, providing meal plan cards and student ID cards that can be used on campus and off campus at participating merchants. We support uh, 70 plus ski resorts, um, number of uh, QSR customers. We provide mobile technology as well, and that shortly will include phone-to-phone -phone soft pause uh, because of the power of RSPA and getting linked with Yazara and uh, Everens. So we're working together to provide a solution there. We do uh, proprietary gift and loyalty for folks, and we pride ourselves on being agnostic. We've got uh, multiple processing partners, both domestic and international. We can uh, set somebody up either in the United States, uh, Western Europe, South America, uh, Latin America, and the Caribbean. We support multiple gateways. We support multiple device manufacturers um, on the terminal side. So it's PAX, Deja Vu, Ingenico, Magtech, whoever uh, an ISV, an ISO, or a VAR is currently working with, we can most likely support them. Um, some of our benefits, we provide cash discounting and dual pricing with line item inventory on the customer facing terminal. We utilize global tokenization. Everything we do is cloud-based and creates out of scope, semi-integrated card present EMV solutions. And right. if anybody has any questions, I'd love to talk to them. Fabulous. Thank you, Pat. Great to have you here. And uh, thanks for uh, having Dish Out participate and partnering with some of our fellow members. So fabulous. Thank you. Great. All right. We would like to uh, bring next uh, Tyler Young from Tonic. Uh, so Tyler, if you're able to uh, unmute yourself and share uh, your camera, that'd be fabulous. Okay, All right, we can see you. Hey, hey, how you been, Tyler? Good to see you again. Welcome to ISV Spill the Tea. Tonic. What is tonic? If you look in Wikipedia, tonic has a lot of definitions, but there are a few that really stuck out to us when we chose tonic as a brand. You'll soon see in Wikipedia that there'll be a fourth definition that we like, which is a hospitality point of sale, which is tonic. 
But before we get into Tonic, let's talk about why we chose the brand, because the brand represents our goals as a company. Tonic is a beverage. It's at a lot of restaurants, hospitality locations. It's everywhere that a lot of people go to have fun. It's also a keynote to every song. It's the harmony of a song, like a point of sale is the harmony and heartbeat to a restaurant. It is also a remedy, the concoction, if you will. It's a solution for entrepreneurs. That's what Tonic is. Tonic is the solution for entrepreneurs that are bars that are looking for a product that they can sell and rely on in a company that is honest. It's also for the entrepreneurs that are restaurateurs looking for a product that they can offer to local. Um, it's sorry, it's a solution for the entrepreneurs or the restaurateurs that are looking for a product that has local resellers that they can rely on. The key to Tonic success is our Tonic Partner Channel. We distribute exclusively through our partners. That is our focus. So if you're out there selling a point of sale today and you need a new point of sale product or open to one, we'd encourage you to reach out to us. If you don't sell a hospitality point of sale product today, we'd encourage you to follow our social media accounts because we can get all the support we can through our accounts. Because what we have is a big goal, our BHAG, what we call our big, hairy, audacious goal. And it's to install a thousand sites every single month, new locations. Why is that our BHAG and why am I sharing it? I'll end it with this. We have to bring a product to our partners they want and a solution that consumers want. So if we do those two things, we will achieve our goals. Go ahead and reach out to us if you want to pick up a restaurant point of sale product. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Tyler. Glad you can join us today. And it was great to see you a couple weeks ago uh, at uh, Vartec and the RMH show uh, in San Antonio. So good to see you again. You too, Jim. All right, welcome Matt from MoogX to ISV's Spill the Tea. Um, hey Matt, how you doing? Good, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Super. 10 years ago, I took a leap of faith and purchased a pizzeria and little did I know it would, be, it would become uh, a tech lab for developing restaurant software solutions that perform operations and elevate guest experiences. Basically, if you can think about it, we can create it. At Moogax.ai, we've spent 10 years of refining and deploying this restaurant solution software and to revolutionize the industry with innovation that matters. Now, let me share, you, uh, show, uh, share a uh, flagship story with you. Um, imagine serving 3,000 Dole Whips a day at Dole Pineapple Plantation in Hawaii and communicating with those guests regarding the progress of their Dole Whips. It was a challenge, but we had a solution. We created Otis, the order display screen. With Otis, Dole guests can now watch their orders progress from start to finish effortlessly, participating without staff assistance. The results improved guest experience, reduced staff workload, and increased customer satisfaction. Here's what sets us apart. I own a restaurant. We live our clients' pain points every day. We deploy solutions fast to meet our clients' need, including live menus, order display screens, voice order systems, and delivery solutions, and more. If you can think it, we can develop it. If you got clients right now that are experiencing pain points or experiencing uh, um, ideas that they can't get resolved, then think Moogex. Join us in revolutionizing the restaurant industry. Partner with Moogex for innovation that matters. And 1.30. Perfect, great timing. Great information. Thank you very much, Matt. Appreciate it. I uh, appreciate you joining us today. So, all right. So we are halfway through our featured ISV presentations and just want to have a reminder again, this is the magic email address, membership at gorspa.org. You can reach out to these ISVs directly or you can use this email address and connect with the RSP member services team. We're happy to make introductions to these companies or any one of our 730 plus members. Again, just email membership at gorspa.org. Dot org. All right, let's get back to spilling some tea. Next up, uh, we have Deepak from Chiron. Hey, Deepak, welcome to ISV Spill the Tea. Hey, thanks, Jim. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us here. I'm speaking on behalf of Ashwin. My name is Deepak, product manager for Chiron at a company that brings over two decades of experience in creating exceptional products. Today, let me share how Chiron helps retail and SaaS companies sell better through the story of a baby cop, an, an eco-friendly baby product retailer. Baby cop came to us as a newcomer in the market. They aimed to engage expecting parents on their website and boost sales. 
That's where Chiron came in, offering an AI-powered digital assistant whose primary job was to provide real-time customer support and improve the product exploration experience. After running just for a month, Chiron's analytics revealed an intriguing insight. Approximately 20% of customers were inquiring about custom gifting options. This unexpected revelation prompted Baby Corp's CEO to rethink their customer base. They promptly introduced a range of gifting options. The impact was rapid with a significant surge in revenue. And I take pride in sharing feedback from Baby Cop CEO. She said, and I quote, Tyron played a crucial role in optimizing our website and magic and marketing efforts. Their telemetry insights resolved UX issues while their chatbot enhanced lead generation. They delivered impressive results quickly, unquote. In a nutshell, Chiron offers more than just an AI-powered digital assistant. It's a valuable partner in your journey to achieve revenue goals. I'm looking forward to connect with most of you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Great, and thank you very much, Deepak, and uh, thanks for Chiron for supporting the RSP community and participating today. Sure, thank you. All right, up next, we have Sam from CMS Max. Sam, welcome. Good to have you here on ISV Spill the Tea. Uh, thanks for having me. And I got to say, you know, I'm new to this and I'm going to bring a lot of positive energy to it. I attended your show for the first time, you know, just uh, a month or so ago. And uh, I've had nothing but huge success. OK. We bring something, I think, unique to the table to all the members and all the partners of the members as well. And that's, you know, we specialize in building e-commerce websites. That's our big specialty. You know, we'll compete with Shopify, big commerce, WooCommerce on a national level. We don't have millions of client, clients like they do, but you know, we got several thousand clients and our product's been around since 2013. So this is our 10th year anniversary. Um, I would strongly recommend connecting with me after this call for any website help, support, and obviously offering a new product to your customers, uh, which is you know an e-commerce website. We integrate with almost every point of sale out there with the primary focus being on retail. Uh, we don't integrate with any restaurants, but at the end of the day, if you're selling something online, or I'm sorry, something in the store, you should be selling it online, right? It's 2023. So just to give that customer another opportunity to make a sale online from not just shipping, but the convenience of in-store pickup, curbside pickup, DoorDash for delivery, you know what? DoorDash will deliver anything up to 50 pounds. It's not just food. And we do have clients that are on it for, you know, liquor and wine, for example. That's one of our really big markets is liquor and wine. Um, in addition to that, you know, we do have awesome rev share opportunities. So anything that you guys, partners, et cetera, refer to us, we get 50% reoccurring rev share back because it's important that, you know, we keep building rela relationships. Um, on top of that, the last thing I'll say is we definitely specialize in marketing. So when we build a website, you're going to be found. So that's nice feeling. You know, thanks for having me. Great. Thanks for being here today, uh, Sam. And thanks for the kind words uh, about retail now. And thanks for uh, making that event uh, another great one. So already counting down the days to, to next year's. All right. Next up, we have Pears on and Rick Malthainer. Hey, Rick, how have you been? Yeah, I'm great, Jim. Thank you. I'm excited to announce uh, Perzon here at Spill the Tea. Perzon is an AI-driven data platform that connects in-store consumer behavior to the business's online identities, enabling retailers to boost retention, customer engagement, and sales. Most retail and hospitality brands have found that post-pandemic, an average of 85% of purchases happen in physical locations. While it's not easy to connect online advertising to online transactions, until now, it has been difficult, if not impossible, to understand ROAS, which is the acronym for Return on Ad Spend, for in-store transactions resulting from advertising on digital platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, just to name a few. Perzon enables marketers to understand detailed success around these campaigns. Our platform connects to all first-party data sources and unifies omnichannel co customer data under one performance dashboard. The Perzon AI-powered segmentation engine enriches data and uses predictive analysis to identify customers who are most likely to convert. Leveraging data intelligence from both online and offline purchase behavior, marketers can optimize marketing spend to boost ROI. 
We feature seamless integration to all uh, social media platforms, CRMs, ad networks, and marketing automation platforms. Founded in Israel in February 2020, Perzan's portfolio includes brands like Lego, Nintendo, and Ace Hardware. To learn more about our partner program for both ISVs and resellers, please reach out to me at rick at perizan.com or visit us online at www.perizan.com. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Rick, and glad to have uh, Perizan in the RSPA uh, community. All right, next up we have Rourke, a division of Dumac, and this is a perfect juxtaposition where Perizan has just joined us. Uh, Dumac has been one of the RSPA's longest serving members. So, uh, Steve, uh, welcome to ISV Spill the Tea, and thanks again for the decades of support uh, from Dumac of, of the RSPA. Thanks, Rick, and thanks to all the panelists. It's been exciting to join, and I'm excited to really introduce everyone to the world of Dumac and our latest software product, Rourke version 7. Uh, we really have a remarkable story that's rooted in innovation and passion for revolutionizing the retail landscape. Rourke is our newest crown jewel. It's a point of sale platform exclusively tailored for the independent grocery store owner or group. Uh, but that's not all. We're also able to support specialty food retailers and select C-store formats. But we have found that our sweet spot is in partnering with grocery stores that share the same supply chain partners. This synergy allows for effective data sharing and promotions that really makes a difference for the independent retailer. But there's more. We thrive in collaborating with regional supermarket teams. We're equipped to seize opportunities in areas like beer and wine and pharmacy services, and we offer comprehensive solutions for these segments. Whether it's a team that needs full service support or they prefer a self-service approach, we have it covered. What really sets us apart is our commitment to inclusivity. Our payment options are designed with everyone in mind, and we proudly support SNAP and WIC benefits that ensures essential programs are seamlessly integrated into our software. But that's not all, we've taken it a step further. Work has created four specific initiatives that work hand in hand with local organizations to improve healthy shopping for SNAP customers. So it's not just about the transactions, it's about making a positive impact on our communities. Work's history is a testament to the commitment to innovation. With over 70 years of experience, we've learned that the adaptability is the key to our success. And that's why we're invested heavily into the software integration of work. We seamlessly connect with e-commerce platforms and retail automation partners, making sure our solutions stay on the cutting edge of technology. So if you're seeking a partnership that values innovation, integrity, and a customer-centric approach, look no further. Dumac and Rourke are ready to embark on a journey of growth and collaboration with you. And together with our exclusive user share groups and customer feedback, we're willing to shape the future of retail technology Great. embrace innovation collaboration and mutual success as those are our guiding principles so thank you for letting dumac join you today jim and we look forward to sharing work with anyone interested in learning more wonderful fabulous thank you steve uh next up we have on isv spill the tea jay donovan from felix hey jay welcome to rspa isv spill the tea Hi, how are you, Jim? Uh, thanks for the introduction. So my name's Jay and um, I'm representing Felix Payment Systems. We're a cloud-based EMV payments platform. So what that means is um, we have a EMV cloud kernel and the products, our products that come from that is an contactless payments SDK, that point of sale, developers, retailers, anyone who has a, a point of sale software can integrate contactless payments directly into their current software using our SDK. Uh, we also provide a white label soft pause uh, software that can be uh, used and downloaded on virtually any Android NFC enabled device. Um, we have uh, another product, which is our Play Store uh, application for, you know, for smaller retailers and that kind of thing. They can just download directly off the Play Store, um, go through to our portal, um, connect up their payment processor. Uh, and this is all tied together by our 
cloud E and V, which is the most important part or the most important aspect uh, of our technology, is that all the security is uh, in the cloud. Uh, none of the processing or anything is done in the device. Essentially, what we do is turn any NFC enabled device into a card reader, um, which the advantages, I guess, for uh, you know, tap to pay integrators into their software or sales partners, hardware partners or enterprise deployments um, is that we're processor agnostic and you can essentially um, work with any of our network of payment processes. Thank you. Great, thank you, Jay, appreciate that information. All right, and now our most patient of the ISVs, uh, let's welcome Gabriella from Cluster. Uh, uh, Gabriella, tell us a little bit about Cluster here on ISV Spill the Tea. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me today. Looks like we saved the best for last. Just kidding. Um, so I'm here to talk to you guys about Cluster. We are a POS system. Uh, we were created for the restaurant industry. So anywhere from table service, fine dining, quick service, uh, food court, food truck, catering, you name it, uh, we could be the solution for that type of a business. Uh, we are based in Canada. We've been servicing across the country for almost 15 years now. Uh, we have recently launched in the US since about January, which is extremely exciting for us. We're very excited to work with our friends across the border. Um, we are known especially for our user-friendly software. It's super intuitive, it's very easy to learn, especially when a restaurant is migrating from one POS to another. How easy it is to learn that software is quite important. Um, we also have a wonderful dedicated team behind to really help the onboarding process. So anything from A to Z, the menu programming, the software training, installation, whether it's helping them over the phone or even sending someone on site, our team has got it covered. Um, some nice features, I know I've heard it a couple times during other presentations, we're not uh, payment processing exclusive, we're agnostic, which is really nice. It gives our uh, customers flexibility with regards to who they'll process with. Um, and then really the underlining is our service. So customers who work with Cluster can really count on a six-star service. We have an entire team dedicated. At the end of the day, as someone who's worked in restaurants, on a Friday night when it's rush and it, your restaurant is full, if something happens, you wanna know you're working with a team that'll answer the phone or that you can contact quickly, and that's what we're here for. Thank you. Great, thank you, Gabriella. Appreciate that. Thanks to all of our ISVs for presenting. Uh, now it's your turn from the audience standpoint. Uh, you see the question or chat function that you have on the screen. Uh, take a minute now, again, share your perspective, ask a question, make a comment, and then we will uh, either read your question or we'll be able to uh, call on you. So while you're doing that, just a friendly reminder about what we mentioned uh, from the get-go, uh, RSPA Inspire, uh, that's the slide that you see on your right. Um, register now uh, and make sure you book your hotel room uh, also because we have sold out almost 50% of our hotel room block for that. And then also save the date for retail now. And if you're a vendor, make sure you reserve uh, your booth for retail now um, because the show floor is about half sold out uh, as well. So, all right, well, uh, I, let's ask all of our, uh, looks like everybody has been able to uh, stick around. So uh, again, we're happy to start anywhere that the audience would like us to. Uh, again, a question, idea, a comment, or a thought based on what you've heard today. Uh, you know, ask the question through the Go to Webinar platform. We will call on you uh, and unmute you. So, all right. Uh, so the first question uh, that we have is, and again, whoever wants to raise their hand first and, and tackle this. Um, so it seems like a lot of folks who are on the phone today uh, or on this call today. Uh, we're playing in the retail market, playing in that niche. So where do you see retail trending? What are some nuances do you think our audience needs to know in terms of what's happening from a retail standpoint? And then if we have time, maybe we'll get into hospitality and restaurants as well. So who wants to speak up and see what are some of the big trends you're seeing in the retail space? Who wants to go first? Uh, Jim, Jim, I'll jump. I'll I'd talk about right, some of the you, trends. Yeah, that Pat first, Pat first, and then Steve. Yeah, Pat uh, first, then Steve. No, I was going to say All one right. of the trends that we see right now is um, the uh, 
increasing adoption of dual pricing, either cash discounting or surcharging in the retail space, um, allowing those merchants to keep a bigger part of their uh, margin and profit by not having to pay those processing fees and passing that on to the consumer. Got it. Great. And uh, just we had a very popular session on that at Retail Now. And then Jim Miller is going to be up on stage at Inspire. Uh, and we're going to have a big open forum discussion there talking about, like I said, dual pricing, uh, cash discounting, surcharging, things of that nature. So thank you, Pat. Steve, uh, what trend are you and Dumax seeing in retail? One of the trends we're seeing is uh, compared to the recent years, we're seeing more frequent trips into the brick and mortar locations. Uh, more frequent trips, but not, not necessarily larger orders. Uh, they're getting fewer items. And so um, it's not a bad thing to have customers coming into your location more frequently. Uh, you certainly like to see them buy more items, but I think inflation has, uh, you know, seeing, you know, that's where we're seeing the impact of inflation. But the challenge to our retailers is that these frequent trips and these smaller transactions as far as count, not necessarily the, 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 the actual dollar volume may seem larger, but it's fewer items per trip. And what that means is it increases the labor cost per transaction. That's some trends that we see that, you know, we feel are important that we help our customers with at the current time. Great, interesting. Thank you, Steve. Uh, any of our other ISV panelists want to talk about a trend they're seeing in retail? All right, who wants to tackle restaurants? Who wants to go first with that? What are some trends that you're seeing in the restaurant hospitality vertical? Who wants to go first? All right, Matt. Um, yeah, I own a, I own a restaurant. So I started this whole thing um, with software by, by buying a restaurant. And my kids and family said, you're, you're nuts. Why would you ever own a restaurant? So, you know, one of the things that we're seeing, we're on a little island in Florida, um, but, um, and I think everybody's going to see this, um, student loan payments are coming out uh, this month. Um, we've also got oil at $100 a barrel. And um, in, in, through the pandemic, we actually grew, which was kind of contrary to, and I think some of the restaurants did grow, but I think what we're seeing right now is, um, is our dollar volumes per ticket um is coming down um our ticket numbers are there but our dollar volumes are coming down so i think that's going to be trending all across the united states i know canada doesn't have a student loan payment thing but that that student loan is going to suck a, a billion and a half dollars out of the retail space so um i i would expect uh, just like just like um i think steve or pat said is that uh, you're going to see you're going to see those ticket numbers start to come down and especially with gas going up and, and um, that's what we're seeing on our island. I mean, gas right now is like uh, approaching $4 a gallon. Um, so I think what we have to do is maybe along the lines of, um, you know, how are we going to address that? People are gonna start eating it back at home where we saw grocery store, grocery stores used to be, um, and, and um, dining out used to be somewhat um, unrelated um, pandemic, what we saw is people starting eating out because groceries were as expensive as eating, uh, uh, going to a restaurant. And I think you're going to start seeing that change a little bit. I think you're going to see restaurant volume start to go down. People starting eating, um, uh, buying at the grocery store is going to go up. Um, a lot of that is uh, factual data, you know, from the you know, newspapers and stuff that I've read. But the other thing is we're starting to see that now, especially approaching winter. And with gas and the student loans coming back, I think I think we're going to start seeing an impact on the retail side and restaurants. Great, thank side. you, Matt. Who else wants to weigh in? Trends in hospitality and restaurants. I'll jump in, and Pat mentioned it in retail, but it's also been going on for a long time in hospitality, which is dual sticker pricing, cash discounting, surcharging. It's certainly been a trend that has been adopted over the last few years, and it's a trend that seems to have basically crossed it over where everyone is looking to get onto that now. And it's more rare that I find a location not doing it. I've traveled to a lot of locations for trade shows and I'd say, believe it or not, 90% of the restaurants we ate at had some sort of fee that they were adding to the bill. This is something that I personally never thought would take traction. I think a lot of us thought adding a surcharge wouldn't, but due to cost, there's an attraction to being able to save those funds. And that's a trend that I don't see going away anytime soon, even with Visa really coming down hard on the surcharging or the cash discounting aspect of it. 
because you can always do dual sticker pricing, which is um, a way to implement that. I've also seen that to agree with Pat on the retail side and being adopted, especially outside of gas stations, because it's always been at convenience stores or gas stations at some point. Other trends that we're seeing was a high adoption of technology and online ordering through 2020. And that's really come down in 2022 into 2023 that what we have seen the online ordering rushes that they were receiving and a lot of restaurants were actually able to increase their sales and some didn't even reopen because they were making more through their online ordering or pickup that they didn't open their doors. They kind of delayed those. And they're seeing that just kind of trend back down to the normal pre-pandemic ordering. It's a little higher, but it's, it's trending down. The other thing that we're seeing is the labor shortage is affecting a lot of our restaurants and they're looking for ways to combat that through technology. You know, there's been some robotics that have been adopted in a lot of locations just for being able to be that busser of sending the plates back to the kitchen to be cleaned while the server can remain out with the customers. I think a lot of restaurants are looking at technology to say, how can you help me? A lot of restaurant tours through 2020 got back into their business and got their hands on it, especially the ones that were kind of working and they had to you know, reevaluate how they worked. And they're leaning on the technology, the robotics, the online ordering, the uh, QR ordering, the QR payments. Those are trends that have just dramatically increased in our clientele. Great. Thank you, Tyler. And I know I said at the outset, uh, you know, the opinions expressed don't necessarily reflect the official policy of the RSPA. One is we're seeing that, uh, you know, dual pricing cash discounting is very uh, popular as well. And then the one thing that we'll also say is, and Jill Miller, our general counsel, says there's a right way to do it. And there are ways coloring outside the line. Stay inside the lines. Right. And so we have some guidance in order to do that. Don't feel like oh, I'll be able to get away uh, with this. So. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Tracy Landy at Vault. Uh, Tracy, uh, if you can unmute yourself and uh, if you want to ask your question, please. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. How are you doing, Tracy? Great. Yeah, I'm doing great. I was hoping to hide out via just text. Hey, Pat, good to see you. And shout out to Gabriella, the female voice on this panel. Uh, so I was curious from all of you, uh, what trends you're seeing from your customers, how they're purchasing, time to purchase. Uh, I'm especially curious in the enterprise uh, space. Thanks, Tracy. Who wants to take that first? Purchasing trends, especially in enterprise. Is that consumer purchasing trends or just the business is picking up our products purchasing? Great question. Great question. The business is picking up your product. So who you're selling to. Very curious to learn what that's like in your space today. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll just reframe it for anyone there. On the retail side, we don't sell much into the retail. I think that may be different, different than hospitality. Pat and Steven spoke to that earlier. Can you guys speak to what the retail side is doing for adopting new technology? Uh, you know, I, I will say that what you're seeing on the retail side adopting new technology is automation. Um, it's everything from self-service checkout to online ordering pickup to omni-commerce solutions. In terms of actual what's happening at the retail level, I think, I think Steve is right. We're seeing delays in big ticket items we're seeing a longer sales cycle or purchase cycle, uh, and people are really budgeting as they tend to get concerned about the economy and cash flow right now. Um, I do think we'll have a decent retail holiday se um, season, but it, it's definitely going to be a little bit slower and a little more prolonged than it has been historically. Mm. Yeah, um, I don't think I could add something. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so Deepak, if you can go first, then Gabriella. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, sure. What we have seen is uh, the most of the retail uh, enterprises that we work with, they do buy, they are using the conversational AI and generative AI uh, to be very specific for one, the training purposes, and second, to provide the customer support services to their, uh, to their to their partners. It's not only about the end, end consumers, but also about the number of vendors they interact with. So what we have seen is they have been using the uh, digital assistance to basically do that. So all of the communication is happening through that. Whatever queries a vendor may have, he's just asking that through to a digital assistant, which basically uses the human, uh, you know, it's the response is very, uh, it's, it's there's a human touch in the response. 
and what we have seen is it's not only through a digital assistant on their website but they also integrate the same thing on the multiple messaging applications like messenger slack google chat or whatsapp in some countries and that's how they're leveraging the power of generative ai and just bridging the gap between the uh, bridging the gap of communication that is there that's really interesting thank, thank you deepak gabrielle i don't know if you raise your hand or you're raising the roof again but uh you can go next if you want i, I was raising the roof again yeah sorry about that <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt, do you want to weigh in on this? Um, oh, sorry, yeah, go on ahead, the, Matt. On the retail side, um, and then we have a crossover there with the restaurant side, and that's a huge, huge, huge part of what we're experiencing now is NLP, which is natural language processing, what Deepak was just saying. Uh, NLP is going to take over the restaurant space. Uh, we're already seeing it in the big chains. Uh, you go up through a drive through you're not going to speak to anybody anymore. You go to Hardee's, you go to Checkers, you go to Wendy's, all of those guys now are, are going to NLP and it's good. It's really good. Um, so uh, the, next, the next thing is going to be uh, NLP and order taking uh, through the phone. And so what we, we're all trained on this. Um, you call the gas company, you call the utility company, you're talking to a chat bot, all that through OpenAI. Um, and OpenAI now is... Um, is uh, um, you know basically got an open API, um, so you're seeing a massive amount of movement, and you're going to see that huge. So anybody in the POS space, um, anybody in restaurant, anybody in retail, all that ordering, all the chatbots, that's all going to move to automation. That you're going to have IVR and NLP is huge. We just I just put an ad out in um, in Upwork for an NLP project for voice order um, on hold. So when guests are on hold, they can they have a chance to order instead of waiting on the queue on a Friday night that they'll never get through in a restaurant. And I had I had a hundred developers um, apply for that job. So um, if you're talking about movements all over retail, it's all about reducing labor. And how are you going to do that with with ChatGPT now? It is absolutely incredible. And that's what's pushing the entire economy right now is AI. So anybody on this call, anybody and everybody is using AI to a, to a degree. And NLP, um, IVR, all those, that combination, you just go get the next coffee at uh, Starbucks. You won't have somebody call. You won't have somebody answer. It's going to be all chatbots, all NLP stuff. Thank you, Matt. And just to correct you, this is ISV spill the tea, not spill the coffee. So go get a, co a tea at Starbucks. So just to keep with the theme, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't even know if they sell tea there uh, at all. They're uh, coffee all the time. So, hey, uh, thank you, Matt. <laughs> Rick Malthainer, we want, maybe I've been drinking more than tea during this. You guys can't see me on camera. Uh, Rick Malthainer, uh, you wanted to weigh in on this. Yeah, to sort of expand on that AI theme um, and taking it back to the retail side and specifically enterprise. Uh, what I've seen this year is that they seem to be hanging on more to their main technology, to their point of sale, uh, to their ERP. They're not looking to make big capital expenditures in, in things like hardware, but what they are looking to do is extend their POS and namely leverage that data that they have and be able to get ROI from the data that they haven't really used. And so I think you know AI has been such a buzzword for so long, but what we're starting to see is people bring real um, you know, real ROI to the businesses by um, mining and using that data in a way that they can engage their customers to spend more and, and come in more often. Got it. It's not just gathering the data to run more efficiently, though that's part of it, as we talked about. You said it's leading to more sales. Is that right, Rick? Yeah, for sure. Yep. Great. Thank you. Uh, who else wants to weigh in? I guess, and Tracy shared a uh, comment here. She said, fantastic insights. Thank you. So thank you, everybody. Um, anybody thank else you. want to weigh in on how you see AI or chat GPT impacting? Steve, you raised your hand. Oh, I, I was uh, back on to the uh, enterprise customers. One yeah, of the ahead. things we've seen with the, on, you know, it has been uh, customers are hesitant uh, with the training and onboarding of new solutions automation or, or these new solutions are available and they promise uh you know a good return on investment but our, our we we see that the train the cost of training and onboarding is a significant obstacle to bringing on new tools uh it's more significant than we've seen in the past got it great thank you we have one more person to weigh in anybody else want to weigh in on this 
Uh, Deepak, you have the final word here before we uh, head down the home stretch. Just to add how AI is impacting sales. So we have seen how Amazon through all these years have uh, leveraged the recommendation engines and how they have been pushing their products. But with the advent of AI and uh, with the with the with the emergence of the active selling bots in the industry what they are doing is now every website can have a similar approach they can push their product uh, based on the persona who is visiting the websites and that is what we have seen uh, frequently with with the customers in the us specifically they are using the most of the around 40% of the transaction are transactions are happening within the chatbot within the ai ai powered chatbot so that's one of the point i wanted to add uh, to steven and uh, rick Great, thank you, Deepak. And again, Artspace celebrating its 75th uh, anniversary this year. And again, we've come all the way from cash registers, right, to electronic cash registers. And here we are talking about uh, NLP and AI and everything like that, right? It just shows how you need to change to keep up in this industry. And thanks uh, very much to our ISV presenters here, right? Uh, you guys individually, and then also your organizations, your products are helping our industry uh, and all our merchants stay ahead of the curve. So thank you very much. All right, again, before we go, thanks again to our annual sponsors for their support of the RSPA. Again, the platinum sponsor is Blue Star. Our gold sponsors are CoCard, Heartland, ScanSource, and Star Micronics. And thanks to our uh, sponsors of the niche and startup ISV community, APG, Blue Star, Epson, Ingenico, MagTech, MS, Cash for PayIQ, ScanSource, Star, and Toshiba. And again, a final reminder, we would love to see you at both Retail Now and Inspire. Save the date for Retail Now back in Vegas. And then make sure you check out and attend RSP Inspire, the retail IT industry's uh, number one leadership conference. Again, thanks to everybody who joined us today. Thanks for uh, the great questions. And thanks for the insights. Have a tremendous rest of your day, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you.